Everything money. Learn to invest with Jimmy. J. Money. No matter where you look through the finance YouTube sphere, investors have been excited about Intel. Yet the stock has not budged, and revenue has remained relatively stagnant. Intel just announced their Q2 earnings, and revenues are down 22%. What are the analysts missing about Intel? Analysts have misunderstood the foundation of Intel's business, manufacturing. In this video, I will go over the foundation of Intel's business and how analysts have misunderstood the risk of Intel's plan to expand it. Intel's Business Overview now, if you aren't familiar with Intel's business, you may be confused as to what Intel manufactures. Intel manufactures and designs computer processors. They are, or some may say were, a leader in the semiconductor industry. Intel has three main business segments that contribute to revenue. Selling processors to consumers, selling processors to businesses for big data, and selling processors or products that facilitate connectivity to the internet or from computer to computer. All of these businesses depend on the manufacturing of semiconductors. This is the heart of Intel's business, and it is what analysts have misunderstood about Intel. To understand Intel's foundry business, we must learn some extreme basics about this industry. The manufacturing of semiconductors is very complex. The YouTube channel Asianometry has a lot of videos on the complexities of each step. The industry and most articles you see focus on the most complex steps. These are the lithography and etching steps. The issues are cost, and the extreme complexity of semiconductor manufacturing. The manufacturing of chips is extremely expensive. For one of the main production steps, each machine is approximately $250 million, and less than 25 machines are made each year. According to this article from CNBC, ASML, a main provider of semiconductor manufacturing equipment, sold 140 machines over the last decade for around $200 million each. This works out to only 14 machines a year. The cost of starting a whole new manufacturing line can cost at a minimum $10 to $20 billion. The major players in this realm are spending huge amounts of money. TSMC has announced $44 billion of spending just for 2022. And Samsung announced $360 billion of spending over the next five years. This makes the CHIPS Act seem small by comparison. The cost and low production adds a lot of risk. When a semiconductor manufacturer works with ASML to get a machine, if the specifications are not optimal, it could be years before ASML has capacity to create a new machine. Remember, only 14 machines are made a year, and other semiconductor manufacturers want their machine too. A company may sink $20 billion into a new production line only to have it underperform expectations. If there is a production issue, even with enough money on hand, the company may be unable to rectify the issue due to the low supply of machines made each year. Now, the complexity of manufacturing. Manufacturing semiconductors is probably the hardest type of manufacturing there is. This is due to the scale and cleanliness needed. The manufacturing of processors requires working at the nanometer level. There are 1 million nanometers in a millimeter. This requires a high level of precision. 
in order to reach this level of manufacturing precision, photolithography is needed. Photolithography is the process of manipulating light to manufacture processors. This process requires microscopic lenses that are free from any defect, but this still is not enough to get to the scale needed. In order to enhance the lens, purified water is needed. And when we say pure, we mean pure. It takes approximately 1,600 gallons of municipal water to create 1,000 gallons of ultra-pure water. Water used for semiconductor manufacturing is so purified it is not fit for human consumption. It is an extremely water-intensive process, which is why Intel's plants are located in Arizona. A desert. Yes, maybe not the best planning, although facilities today have greatly increased their water efficiency. This is only a surface level overview of the manufacturing process, but I hope you have the beginnings of understanding just how complex this business is. The manufacturing of semiconductors is one of the most complex industries in the world, and it is why there are only three major players, TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. How does this relate to Intel? There is no shortage of information on Intel's manufacturing troubles. Starting with this article from Extreme Tech, we can see Intel intended to move to the 10 nanometer manufacturing process in 2016. A quick note on semiconductor manufacturing. A smaller nanometer manufacturing process is better, but the launch had been marred by delays. It wasn't until 2020 that they were able to start moving to the new process, a four-year delay. Looking at this 2020 article from The Verge, their latest 7 nanometer manufacturing process is also delayed. Surely it's out now though, right? Nope. According to PC Mag, this is also delayed until 2023. And to make matters even worse, Intel is now intending to utilize their competitor to manufacture chips moving forward due to their struggles. This is a huge embarrassment for Intel. During their latest earnings call, they mentioned their execution issues. It has turned into a running industry joke, with many investors lamenting the delays at Tesla, the delays at Intel are far worse. Intel's current manufacturing troubles have caused it to lose complete market dominance. This is because the performance of a processor benefits greatly from manufacturing process improvements. When Intel executed well on designs and process upgrades, the company benefited greatly. Now, it is struggling with manufacturing, while its competitors can choose between TSMC, Samsung, or use both. The company's well-documented struggles in improving its manufacturing process have led the company to a point where there is little faith the company will execute on future upgrades. Intel now intends to expand the part of their business they are struggling the most with. Intel intends to build additional manufacturing capacity and open up foundry services to external clients. Intel has previously only built chips for itself. If there were issues, it was able to handle them internally. Now, Intel will have the added pressure of coordinating with external clients and delivering manufacturing improvements in a timely manner. No more long delays. A very important part about chip manufacturing is having clarity on the future manufacturing process. Designs are done specifically for future manufacturing processes. When Intel delays implementation, this will delay a customer's time to market. 
Intel's failures to improve their manufacturing process would impact their foundry customers. I can't imagine Intel will be able to charge the margins TSMC does, given their lack of reliability. To compound this issue further, the largest customers in the industry are all Intel's competitors, NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, and Samsung. Thus, Intel has the struggle of offering manufacturing, but only being able to service small companies, combined with offering a service that they themselves have struggled to execute at. Intel's manufacturing troubles are extremely problematic to the longevity of the company. Intel is putting the future of the company on something they have failed to execute on for at least seven years. They are putting more capital at risk in a sector of the business they are struggling in. Analysts have failed to understand just how expensive and complex semiconductor manufacturing is. They do not fully understand the consequences of failure in this industry or how difficult it is to improve the manufacturing process. Further, they have not factored in Intel's history in this portion of the business. Wrap up. Intel is going through its most scary transition yet. The move to serving customers with foundry services is extremely risky with low reward. Given this move has bankrupted so many past semiconductor design and manufacturers, I am holding off on providing a more detailed valuation for this company. Analysts are not understanding the severity of struggle the foundry business faces, how many semiconductor design companies have gone bankrupt manufacturing chips, let alone for outside partners, and the downside risk when a semiconductor company that also manufactures goes through a rough manufacturing patch. I hesitantly forecast an approximate 80% downside risk if Intel fails. This is based on the downside AMD experience when it used to have its own manufacturing arm called Global Foundries. Global Foundries is a modern example of what happens when your foundry services fall behind. This manufacturing arm fell behind in the early 2000s, and AMD spun it off into its own company in 2009. Global Foundries has been uncompetitive ever since, and its financials reflect this. AMD only became competitive when they were able to move their manufacturing to TSMC. This shows the severity of what can happen when you fall behind and are unable to recover. The upside to Intel is not high enough given the risk. Using TSMC as a comparable, both Intel and TSMC are manufacturing at scale. As TSMC is a pure play manufacturer, we can get an idea as to how adding additional manufacturing scale would alter Intel's financials. To keep the math very simple, if Intel was to add 25% of TSMC's capacity as new clients for itself, it could add 25% of TSMC's market cap. This would be $116 billion, which is an 80% upside and thus we have an 80% upside and an 80% downside. No, I did not pre-plan this. That's a coin flip investment and not something I would ever participate in. That's it for me on Intel. I hope you gained more perspective on this company. Leave a like if this was useful or a comment on what I got wrong. Bye.